So welcome to this video about how to calculate the mass of the Earth. In classical mechanics, two objects are going to gravitationally attract each other with some force given at the bottom there. And it relates to the mass of the two objects and the separation between the two, which is R. So in this case here, Earth is the larger mass and the Moon is the smaller mass. Now, in order for the Moon to be on an orbit around the Earth, it has to be travelling with some velocity perpendicular to the actual gravitational force. Now, the orbit isn't circular, so it's a bit of approximation. And that velocity can be approximated to about 2 pi, the distance separating the two objects, divided by the orbital period. Now, we can calculate the orbital period or measure the orbital period fairly easily. So if we actually look at the, phase, the, the lunar phase, so from one new moon to an, another new moon, that can give us an idea of the orbital period. It's gone all the way around and back to the same phase that it was before. So that can give us an idea of the orbital period of the moon just by looking at the phases and when it gets back to where it was. Now, it's not quite as straightforward as that because there are two different periods associated with the moon. Now, the synodic period is 29.5 days. And this is the time between each new moon, so the lunar phase. But because the Earth is also orbiting the sun, in order to get the same lunar phase, uh, basically it's travelled a little bit further. So it goes all the way around the Earth and a little bit more so that it's in the same orientation as it was before. So a synodic period is actually longer than one orbital period. So that lunar phase that we see when we actually look at the moon from Earth is a little bit longer than it would be for a single orbital period. Now the sidereal period is 27.3 days and that is one 360 degree rotation around or orbit around the Earth. So we can make a note of that with respect to the background stars. So instead of using the sun and the lunar phase, we're going to look at the position of the moon relative to the background stars. And that is approximately two days shorter than it would be for the synodic period, which is the lunar phase. So it's actually this one we want. So 27.3 days is the orbital, orbital period we actually want to do this calculation. So the orbital period then is given by this equation here. So it relates again to the separation between the two objects and the mass. But we're now we have a value for that orbital period, which is 27.3 days. Now we can rearrange that for the mass of the Earth. So if we re rearrange for the mass of the Earth, we then have this equation. And there's two things in there that we need to know. One is the orbital period, T, and then the other one is the, the separation between the two objects, which is R. Now to get R, the most accurate way is to reflect the, so a laser off a retroreflector on the surface of the moon. So the lunar ranging laser is the most accurate. And what we're doing there is you're measuring the time for it to travel to the moon and back. And then you can calculate the distance because we know the speed of light. Now the orbital period, so the orbit of the moon is not perfectly circular, it is elliptical. So its distance changes throughout one orbit, but we can take multiple measurements and then we can calculate an average distance. And the average distance is given above there. And it's probably worth noting that over a, a period of time, it is moving further away. So that average distance is going to actually increase over time. And it's only moving just under four centimetres per year, but it is still moving nonetheless. So once you've got those values, you can then calculate a mass of the Earth and you'll get a value of approximately six times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Now you can do that for most planets, stars, as long as you've got an object orbiting, and you can calculate those two things, you can also calculate the mass of the object. So thank you for watching.